the legendary rebel and the last leader of the Ukrainian insurgent army was destined to live a long life. He witnessed the proclamation of independent Ukraine in 1991. It was his dream and a matter to which he dedicated his entire life. His comrades in arms, with whom he tried to create the sovereign and independent state in the middle of the last century, was either killed by Soviet authorities or spent decades in Stalin concentration camps. He was able to survive during the Soviet era regardless of his high rank in the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists OUN, while working as a common staff scientist in different establishments. member of the Central Command of OUN and the last leader of the UIA, General Ensign Vasil Kuk belonged to a generation of Ukrainian patriots who would give their lives without a second thought for the freedom and independence of the country. He was from the generation that formed under the influence of those who fought in World War I and then the Ukrainian Galician Army. They witnessed death and blood and were ready to take radical actions. Usually the vast majority of society didn't participate in war and never saw trenches in death. Those who came back were radicalized. They had a great influence on the young generation to which Vasil Kuk belonged. One of the major ideologies that new Ukrainian organizations, for instance the Ukrainian military organization, adhered to was the idea that Ukrainians had to overcome the fear before incarceration. The fact is that people deprive themselves of the fear before being sent to concentration camps and even before death. Vasil Kuk was born in January 1913 in the village Krasne in the Lviv region. This territory was occupied by Polish soldiers after the First World War. My father was a worker. He lived in Austria. My mother was a country woman. My father had some land, so he believed that his children had to get an education. He said something can be lost, but something will always remain in one's mind always. He sent me to a gymnasium as well as his other sons. So I was sent to study in a gymnasium since the age of 10. During his studies, Vasil enrolled in the National Scout Organization PLUST. After completing his studies, he became a member of the Youth Organization of the UN in 1929. At that time, repression of the Ukrainian population in Galicia, which was against colonialist politics, assimilation and deprivation of rights, began due to the internal political crisis in Poland. Poland launched mass punitive action, so-called specification, to pacify Ukrainians. It was a great terror against the Ukrainian nation. Polish dragoons just went on punitive expeditions to Ukrainian villages. The village activists or those who were teaching could have been repressed or incarcerated in prison for fabricated accusations. The entire male population was beaten up and punished with ramrods. Needless to say, in the end, some were totally crippled due to such harsh physical assaults. Could these events have sparked an uprising? Of course, it was a matter of opposition. The dominating part of people in Western Ukraine was Ukrainians. They had either to accept the fact they were being humiliated or they had to protest. The new generation responded saying, no way, we lost the state and now we must fight together to return it. After all, it is our homeland. Vasil Kuk dedicates himself to political activity. He became an active member of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists in 1932. He transported weapons and illegal literature to Krakow and Volhynia when he performed the role of courier. He was arrested several times by Polish police for the revolutionary activity and he was convicted for two years in 1934. 
Cook was head of the Zolochev County Command of OUN after being released. He went undercover to avoid being arrested in 1937. He had more personal motives in the radical political fight. His younger brother Iliari was executed by Polish authorities in 1938 for his involvement in OUN. Матір Василя Кука також була на тій страті, як і Василь Кук. Vasil Kuk's mother was there with him. She was holding his hand, and when his brother was executed, she said, Look, son, remember who did this and why. Remember why he is dying. I think such personal motives had a great impact on his strong, iron-fisted personality. Я думаю, що такі особисті мотиви також відігравали велику роль у тому, що ця людина була такою залізною. Vasil Kuk organized and led the headquarters of OUN, march units, in western regions of Ukraine when World War II broke out. These units had to organize the functioning of local government bodies. The march units included 12,000 members who are part of a well-trained militia with a strict political affiliation. They were assigned to enter Ukrainian towns after the German armies and assumed the role of a local government, thus declaring the presence of Ukrainian state. In fact, it was exactly Vasil Kuk who personally formed these march units. After the unfortunate attempt of proclamation of the restoration of the Ukrainian state in Lviv on 30th June 1941, all UN members wanted to hold a similar rally in Kyiv. This was the main reason why Vasil Kuk organized and led the Kyiv March Unit, which steadily moved towards the capital of Ukraine. The front was frozen for two months near Kyiv. This period was enough for the Germans to determine who was not local. They were found within these two months. Then the Germans arrested them near the town of Vasilkiv. Cook managed to escape from custody during the transportation and fled to Lviv. Vasil Cook headed the all UN in southeastern Ukrainian lands with Dnipropetrovsk as the center in the spring of 1942. He led the UIA south after the appearance of the Ukrainian insurgent army. It was a part of the insurgent army that was functioning in the region of Podilia with the partial coverage of the Kyiv, Zhitomir, Ternopil and Rivne oblasts. And what's interesting is that the Germans thought that Lemis, or he had a pseudonym Yurko, what is interesting is that the Germans were convinced that Lemish, also known as Yuri, was an insane bandit. He was big, strong and looked like a fairy tale knight. For this reason, they could not catch him. I asked Cook, how did you manage to avoid them? And he responded, they were fools. I wore simple tarpaulin boots, a sleeveless camisole and moved around like a simple peasant. In short, no German soldier could believe that this person was the leader of the UIA South. Vasil Kuk led the UIA south until the moment when the Soviet army pushed German troops back to the western borders of Ukraine. The Soviet army posed a serious threat to the UIA in those years. The Soviet authorities sent several divisions of the NKVD to fight against the so-called OUN bandits. The NKVD took punitive actions against the UIA in April 1944. Cook's divisions had to face fight with NKVD troops near the Herbie tract in the Rivne Oblast on April 21st. The confrontation was uneven, but Cook's soldiers managed to escape the entrapment. The fight near Hurby continued for a whole week. When I went there, it turned out that I was the only leader. The leader of the UIA North with his troops ended up near Hurby, albeit on territories occupied by the Germans. The front line separated us, and I was alone. There I formed a high command from these people. I led the battle near Herbie. I wanted to send all those units in the eastward direction. I never wanted there to be a battle near Herbie. Vasil Kuk became the assistant of UIA leader Roman Shuhevich in 1947. 
He was chosen to be the leader of the OUN organization in Ukraine and commander-in-chief of the UIA after Shuhevich passed away on May 5, 1950. Cook chose different war tactics in condition of the potential occupation of Ukraine by the Soviet regime. Cook, as the new leader of underground, prohibited armed actions after 1950, and especially after the death of Shuhevich. He allowed this to happen only in the context of self-defense or the procurement of arms. They mostly banked on agitation actions, worked with youth and worked with people in eastern Ukraine. They aimed to move the underground to the east. They realized that military actions only exposed them and led to the Soviet Union allocating huge resources for further major operations against them. The Central Committee of the Ukrainian Communist Party upon the command of Moscow ordered the KGB to eliminate Vasil Kuk or capture him and force him to work on the Soviet Union. The operation to capture the resistance leader was controlled personally by Mikita Khrushchev. Kuk was arrested by the KGB with the help of recruited former underground soldiers on April 1954. They often used these so-called objects they called surprises. It was either food poisoning or they ate at the soporific Neptune 47. Cook was seized through this method. He was fed the soup with this medication, which paralyzed him. This is a specific nerve medication, which paralyzes a person for several hours. He was released when the Khrushchev thaw period began. Cook wrote a so-called open letter to OUN members abroad before he was released. It was illogical to continue underground resistance in that context. I spoke sincerely then. It was illogical to send people from abroad and create underground organizations. I believed that it was totally unnecessary. There were the 60s. I met poet Vasil Stus back then. I said to him as well, don't organize underground organizations. It would be easier for them to discredit you as a provocateur and send you to a concentration camp. You should use this position of self-identification till separation. You have right to do this. He had to convince people that no further aid is needed and there is no need to send people here, because the people they sent will die for no reason. He found one possible form that was appropriate for that situation. He waited for his death warrant every day, and this pressured him until 1980s. It is known that in the letter of Fedorchuk sent to Sherbitsky, it was written that this person didn't cooperate with the system. He lied to them. He wrote, he didn't give up his ideology, he remained convinced in his views. Then he implied that the death warrant be executed. Vasil Kuk specialized in scholarly work in the Central State Historical Archive and the Institute of History of the USSR National Academy of Sciences in the 1970s to 1980s. He published biographical essays about Stepan Bandera, Roman Shuhevich, and a fundamental catalog of documents titled The Ukrainian State, Act of June 30, 1941, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. The legendary Vasil Kuk passed away in autumn of 2007. According to his will, he was buried in his native village Krasne in the Lviv Oblast. He was independent and uncompromising his entire life. He refused to accept the title of Hero of Ukraine until the government makes its mind about the status of UIA members. He was very silent in public, yet he maintained his views and values without hesitation until his very last days.